Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I'm from executeautomation.com and welcome to part 22 of our BDD video series. And in this video, we will be talking about parallel execution with SpecFlow, Selenium and NUnit. And this video is actually a complete continuation of part 21 of this particular video series. And in order to have a clear understanding on NUnit as well as running the test parallelly in Selenium with NUnit, Please go ahead and watch part 14 and 13 of Selenium with C Sharp video series of Exit Automation channel. Well, since this video is kind of very, very long, I have split this video into two parts, and this video is part A of this particular series. All right, so let's get started. SpecFlow parallel support with Selenium. So, this video, as I already said, is going to be a complete continuation of part 13 and part 14 of Selenium with C Sharp video series because in that video we discussed how to execute Selenium test parallelly using parallelizable attribute of NUnit. So, I'm going to make use of that guy this time. So, let's quickly see this in action and see how things work. So, for that, I'm going to flip to Visual Studio. So, this is the same project which we worked in our previous video. We created a very very simple dummy scenarios with a user login feature and user form feature and you can see that we added a feature folder and a steps folder and I'm going to steal some of the code from our previous video series which is nothing but part 13 and part 14 of Selenium with C Sharp video series this code as you can see in this code we were using the parallelizable attribute for our test fixture and we were executing the test in parallel in two different browsers. One is in the Firefox browser and another one is in the Chrome browser. And we created a class like base with the iWeb driver in here. And we created the hooks for the initialization of the driver and executing the test even in a remote web driver in the Selenium grid setup for local machine as well as in a docker container. So we were discussing about this particular code a lot in many different video series of Excel Automation channel. So I'm going to extend the same concept here, the parallelization concept into SpecFlow and see how things works, right? So all I have did is this. I have created a base class and a hooks class and then the unit test 1.cs. Instead of the unit test 1.cs class, I'm actually going to make use of our SpecFlow feature files and this time we're not really going to make use of Google website. Rather, we are going to make use of our exit automation demo website, this one, right? So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to hop over to my project right here and I'm going to create two files as we already discussed. The one is the base.cs and then I'm going to create one more very, very important file which is nothing but the hooks class file. So let's give this as hook.cs and I'm not really going to make use of the event binding rather I'm just going to make use of the class and we will add some of the event that I really require. So again we have already discussed about the hooks and the different kinds of binding which is available in specflow in this particular video series in our previous videos. So please go ahead and watch those videos to understand how to work with different kinds of hooks in specflow. So I'm going to make this as public and I'm going to add the attribute binding. And in this binding, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a before scenario attribute and let's call this as initialize. And within this initialize, I'm going to initialize my driver. But the web driver is actually going to be available in my base class as I already did in our previous video series code. So I'm just going to make use of the public iWeb driver driver. And as it turns out that we don't have the reference for the Selenium yet. So I'm just going to go to the reference manage NuGet package. And here I'm going to install or add the reference for the Selenium web driver. So let's quickly add that. And let's add the Selenium support as well. Of course, we don't require this, but maybe in future we will require it. So I'm just adding this as a heads up. And now if I hit control dot, you can see that the reference is available, right? So let's remove the unnecessary usings and let's go over here in the hooks.cs file. We are going to inherit from the base class 
so that I can see the driver property available right here for me or the driver variable available for me and then I can just call the Firefox driver right here and then in the after scenario oops after scenario I'm just going to call the cleanup to close the driver so I'm just going to do driver dot quit to close the driver there we go and for the login step dot CS class I'm actually going to call the base class once again so that I can actually call the drivers right because this particular object is going to hold my navigational stuff like driver dot navigate driver dot find element by driver dot everything so everything that you require for your selenium to perform the operation this is going to happen right using the driver object so I'm just going to call this guy and I'm just going to copy the URL right here so this will navigate me to that particular website and then and I, and I enter the username and password so I'm going to make use of our dynamic properties for the spec flow so let me install that as well again we have already discussed about the spec flow assist.dynamic so I'm just going to use that for creating a dynamic instance of the tables there we go so since there is the change in the app.config it's just asking us that there is some change going on there let's quickly add that so right now I'm just going to replace all the dummy stuff that we did in our previous video so let's make this as dynamic data is equal to table dot create dynamic instance and let's hit control dot so this will add the reference for me and then I'm just going to enter the username and password so in order to enter the username and password I can use the page object model but instead of page object model I'm just going to use the driver dot find element by so this is again going to be a class by dot I guess it's the name for the user name text box because I've been using this for so long I know what it is and for the send keys I'm just going to type the value data dot username which is actually coming from the table and as you can see here in the login dot feature the column name username so I'm just using that and the password column name is password right so I'm just going to use that so let's copy this and paste it right here so I guess the name is password and this is also password the data which I'm retrieving there we go so this is going to enter the username and password right here and then I need to click the login button so I'm just going to make use of the same above code but for the login I guess the object is going to be login I somehow forgot yep the name is login so let's call the name as login and here I'm just going to just click the button or maybe I'm submitting the button so I'm just gonna call the submit method and then I should see the user logged into the application so I can do this by doing a little code to verify if I see this execute automation selenium test site which I'm going to do something like this as you can see I'm just calling the driver find element by xpath of the header which contains the text exit automation selenium something like this and then I'm just going to check assert that the elements text is not null if it is null then it will throw you an error saying header text is not found right so there we go this is the only change which I'm going to make right here and the last change which I'm going to make in, is in the user form step.cs so again once again the same thing here dynamic data is equal to table dot create dynamic instance so let's add that so for the sake of time I'm just gonna copy paste some of the code which I have already written all I'm gonna do is I'm just going to inherit from the base class the errors will be gone I'm just adding a thread dot sleep here this is for an intentional purpose and then I'm gonna add the reference for the by class there we go 
that's it so these are the few changes that I made right here to make this code running as a actual running selenium test right here right so now if I try to execute this test and see what is gonna happen let's quickly run at least one test and see if I could execute the login feature so uh, let's run this and see what's gonna happen and you can see that there will be an error or otherwise called as a null pointer exception right here right so the null reference exception is happening and it is saying that the object reference is not set to an instance of an object and what is this actually saying it says that the object reference is not set to an instance of an object in the first step itself so what is our first step in our login step as you can see this is the step given I navigate to the application so if you go to the login feature you can see that it is failing in this particular step definition or step itself so if I do an F12 you can see that the driver is actually null and why is this null suddenly because the code which we already written in our previous video series the part 13 and 14 was working fine and why is it not working fine right now and the reason is because every time you call the base class it is going to assign a null driver for you even though you have initialized that particular driver in your hook.cs in your before scenario so if you hit the breakpoint right here if you debug this particular test you can see that the breakpoint is actually hitting in the before scenario attribute for this initialize method and if I just do a step over you can see that it's actually going to open the Firefox browser for us there we go and now if I just step over once again and it is going to go to the given I navigate to the application step let's do a step into so it's coming right here so what is happening after that it is throwing us a null pointer exception or a null reference exception so if I go over here you can see that the driver is actually null and that's the reason because it is calling the base class right here and then we are actually getting the problem we can actually resolve this problem by setting the driver as a static property in the base class and then we can just execute the particular test but the part of the problem is while performing a parallel execution in specflow you should not use any of the static properties that's what we discussed in our previous video which is nothing but the part 21 where any of the properties within the test should not be static please ensure that no property that you use in your test project is static or using a static keyword for the variable which is going to be used for your test because your test if you make this a static then it will not work with a parallel execution of specflow so how to resolve this particular null pointer exception we will actually work that in our next video of this particular video series so that's it guys once again stay tuned for the next video and thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day